By the end of this video, I'm going to show you data that will make you question the value of releasing games on Game Pass, especially one like Psychonauts 2. Welcome everyone, I am Oldbit and this is Did Anyone Play? A series where we investigate, analyze, and determine the truth about how much gamers have truly played and completed video games. We pull trophy and achievement data from games and feed that into our huge gaming database. From there we pick apart the trends, dissect the data, and ultimately rank games against the whole gaming industry as we dive deep into player behaviors to tell us how gamers are really playing our favorite games. And the best part is that all results we'll be reviewing come from the total number of players that have launched and played the game for any period of time. So these results are a full reflection on how gamers actually played Psychonauts 2. But first a little challenge. Let's play Better or Worse where I give you three games and you have to guess if Psychonauts 2 did better or worse for player completion compared to each of these games. I'll give the answers out a bit later in this video. So you can see the games Psychonauts 2 is up against. We have Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Baldur's Gate 3, and Sonic Frontiers. So make your choices and good luck to you. Now let's find out if anyone actually played Psychonauts 2 on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation. The first milestone that players will likely reach is called Employee of the Year. This milestone is achieved once a player navigates through Lobato's Labyrinth. It's essentially the tutorial for the game. So how many players made it to this first early milestone? On Steam, 80.5% of players hit this milestone. PlayStation had a stellar 91.3%, and Xbox had only 45.2% of players do this. And clearly, this first data is showing something a bit off with Xbox. PlayStation starts off really strong and only loses a bit over 8% of players through the tutorial. Psychonauts loses almost 20% of players on Steam before the tutorial ends, but the results are still above the industry average. However, when we look at Xbox, the flagship platform for Psychonauts 2, we see that more than 50% of players never make it through the tutorial. 50%. Let that sink in, and let's go to the graph. Here you can see visually that Psychonauts 2 is performing above the industry average for PlayStation and Steam, and that is definitely where you want to be. But Xbox is performing well below the industry average, and it's a devastating start right out of the gate. So what kind of game is Psychonauts 2? It's a single-player platformer where we control Raz, a young acrobat that's training to become a Psychonaut. The Psychonauts are a special task force that uses their psychic abilities to stop criminals. Through the game, Raz is trying to learn who is behind the capture of the Psychonauts' leader, and also about his family history. By delving into the minds of others, Raz can find clues, and these mindscapes make for very visually interesting game levels. The main story can take around 20 hours to complete, and it was developed by Double Fine, and published by Xbox Game Studios. Psychonauts 2 released on Xbox, Steam, and PlayStation in August of 2021. The second milestone we've chosen is called Menti Fresh. This is awarded when a player receives their first assignment in the game. How many players made it here? Steam has 73.1% of players achieving this, PlayStation has 86.7%, and Xbox has 35.5%. Psychonauts has a solid hold on players here, as it's in the single digits across all platforms. Steam and PlayStation are way above the average now, and Xbox has improved a bit, but it's still way below the industry average. It's hard to see how much Psychonauts 2 is struggling on Xbox, but thriving on the other platforms. It's always good to understand the competition a game was up against when it was launched. What was happening around August 25th of 2021 in the gaming world? We see titles like Hades, Alien Fireteam Elite, and Madden NFL 22 came out around this time on the platforms. Looking at Google Trends here, we see that Psychonauts 2 in blue was holding its own against the competition, but definitely weaker against Madden and Hades, so it's clear that the hype was average for Psychonauts 2, and the competition was strong. We'd like to pick a mid-game marker for our third milestone. Here we have chosen to the letter. Players can achieve this by unlocking Ford the Mail Clerk's Mind. How many players reach this milestone? Steam has 51.3% of players do this, PlayStation has 65.2%, and Xbox has 16.4%. This is a larger and more consistent drop across all platforms of around 20% each. PlayStation and Steam are still well above the industry average here, while Xbox is still struggling below it. Only 16% of Xbox players are still engaged at this mid-game milestone, while PlayStation has 65%. It's a huge difference. How did Psychonauts 2 do with critics? Metacritic for Xbox rates it at 87 out of 100. PlayStation also had an 87, and PC had an 89. On Steam, users have rated it overwhelmingly positive recent and all time with over 9,000 reviews. 
The Open Critic rating is an 89, with 97% of critics recommending it. The critical reception for Psychonauts 2 was very strong. The most important milestone is our fourth one, and what we base our industry ranking on. This milestone is called Finish What Was Started, and it's awarded when a player completes the main story. Where does Psychonauts 2 end up on the different platforms? On Steam, 43% of players completed this milestone. For PlayStation, it was a whopping 54.9%, and on Xbox, it was 13.1% that finished the game. As for drops, Xbox actually had the smallest drop, but that's likely because there were very few players left playing. PlayStation had the largest drop for this milestone at 10%, but is still well above the average for the game industry. Now that we've reached the end of the game, we want to check the percentage of players that quit the game after making it through the first milestone but failing to reach game completion. Here all platforms are doing better than the average industry result, but they are not the same. PlayStation is head and shoulders better than anyone else for Psychonauts 2, but Steam is no slouch as well. Xbox is just barely doing better than the average and has clearly struggled compared to the other platforms. The player retention on PlayStation and Steam is really great. Finally, to get a feel for how the completionist treated this game, the rare Milestone 5 chosen for Psychonauts 2 is called Unlimited Power. This milestone can be achieved if the player acquires all upgrades, which is a very difficult one as you must collect all items in the game to reach rank 102. For Steam, we see that 14.4% of players actually accomplished this. On PlayStation, 18.6% did it, and Xbox had 2.4% that achieved this. Those are really high results for Steam and PlayStation for a milestone this challenging. It says a lot about how engaged the game kept players. Now let's see the full picture. Here are the raw milestones for Psychonauts 2 with the industry averages in gray for comparison purposes. Let's get into it. Some highlights for this view of the data is that Psychonauts did very well on PlayStation and Steam. From start to finish at every milestone, it performs well above the industry average. PlayStation is the strongest platform throughout the game and significantly separates from Steam. The second and even more significant trend to look at here is the crazy underperformance of Xbox for Psychonauts 2. Xbox is the premier platform for this game as Xbox owns the studio. The difference is that Xbox released this game on Game Pass day and date, and unfortunately, this is the outcome. So this is our final tally for our milestones, but now let's see how the game stacks up against all other games in our database and find out if anyone truly played Psychonauts 2. We use Milestone 4 as our ultimate ranking target. Here are the results for each platform for Milestone 4 once again. It's time to reveal the final rank Psychonauts 2 has in our database. Here we go. PlayStation is a perfect 10 and Steam is ranked 9. These are exceptional results. Everyone played Psychonauts 2 on PlayStation and almost everyone played it on Steam. However, Xbox is at rank 3. This means that not very many gamers actually played Psychonauts 2 on Xbox. So it's a mixed bag. We should celebrate that we have a perfect 10 for Psychonauts 2 on PlayStation, but the results on Xbox are bringing the room down a bit. So now we can use our huge database to carve out some different comparisons and trends. Let's break it down. Here we can show the breakdown for Psychonauts 2 across class, genre, review score, and game length. Please keep in mind that because we are comparing the data across smaller data sets, the statistical power of these rankings are weaker than our overall industry ranking. Starting off with class comparison, Psychonauts 2 is a AA game. So ranking it compared to all other AA contemporaries, we see that the results are stronger. Steam moves to rank 10, and Xbox moves up two ranks. This shows very clearly that gamers played Psychonauts 2 more than other AA titles. How about genre? We have classified Psychonauts 2 as a platformer. Compared to other games in that genre, we see that it shows a bit weaker because we see Steam drop a rank, otherwise no movement. Next is ranking based on reviews. The scores for Psychonauts 2 put it in the category with games that have scored in the 80s for Open Critic. Here the results are weaker as Steam and Xbox drop a rank. Lastly is ranking based on average game completion length. Psychonauts 2 is in the 11 to 25 hours range. There's a bit of movement as Steam goes down and Xbox goes up by a rank. There's a tightening of data here, but not movement up or down, so essentially no change from the industry rankings here. Overall, the breakdowns show that Psychonauts 2 was much stronger in a class-based comparison, but weaker in genre and reviews. All right, it's time to reveal the results for the better or worse challenge. So to recap, Psychonauts 2 is up against Sonic Frontiers, Baldur's Gate 3, and Marvel Spider-Man 2. Last chance to make your choices. And the results are that Psychonauts 2 player retention was worse than Spider-Man 2, but better than Baldur's Gate 3 and better than Sonic Frontiers. Let me know how you did in the comments. Now let's see if we can tease out some other observations by looking at the data in different ways. It's time for the deep dive. 
Let's start with progressive player loss. Each milestone set shows how many total players have stopped playing the game at that particular point. Here we see the massive difference between Xbox and the rest of the platforms. We can also see how dominant Psychonauts 2 is on PlayStation throughout the entire game. Moving on, we can look at milestone player retention. This calculation only takes into account the player population loss as a percentage compared to the previous milestone. Again, this highlights the tale of two very different gaming experiences. PlayStation and Steam correlate pretty well with PlayStation always dropping the least amount of players by percentage. Xbox is on another timeline with huge drops at Milestone 1 and Milestone 3. There were quit moments on Xbox for Psychonauts 2, but not for any other platform. Now let's take a look at how the rarest milestones perform on the different platforms. PlayStation was the strongest with over 50%, and Steam taking another huge chunk at 40%. Xbox only takes 6%, but that's not a big surprise. Now we can compare early versus late game retention. When you read a chart like this, the best performers are further away from the center of the circle. Early game PlayStation is showing incredibly strong and moving right off the graph with Steam right on the edge. It shows how strong Psychonauts 2 is at the early game phase. End game loss is actually almost as good with results still very strong for PlayStation and Steam. Completionist loss shows PlayStation and Steam right on top of each other with Xbox trailing as they have at every section. Let's take one final look at all the platforms and their Milestone 4 results, but this time we show the full percent rank within our database. This is to give you a detailed view of how the rankings played out. Use this data as you will. Let's wrap this up. So what are our major takeaways from all the data? Psychonauts 2 did amazing on PlayStation and Steam. It ranks a perfect 10 for PlayStation, and it's actually in our top 10 most played games ever right now. That's a huge accomplishment. Gamers clearly love this game and it ate up the story, but not only that, the huge percentages we see with the rarest milestones means everyone kept playing to get every little bit of the game they could. That's exciting because so few games create this kind of energy in their player base. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows because Psychonauts 2 has to contend with the Xbox results. Not very many gamers really played it on Xbox. A rank of three is not impressive. And this was a major Xbox release, but based on the results, you would have thought this was a primary game for PlayStation or PC instead. To prove the point, Psychonauts 2 was up for Game of the Year in 2021 at the Game Awards. It won Xbox Game of the Year at the Golden Joystick Awards, and it won Best Narrative at the Game Developer's Choice Awards. This was a critically acclaimed and loved game, and yet the results on Xbox make it seem like a failure. And that's the power of Game Pass. We've done a lot of analysis for games that have launched on Game Pass and ones that haven't. There is no denying the damage Game Pass has done to how games are played on Xbox. Psychonauts 2 is a near worst case example. This shows how little time Xbox players might give a Game Pass game as we see 50% leave before a tutorial is done. But if you buy the game and value the game like on PlayStation or Steam, you can see the massive difference in how a product of this quality is treated. Xbox gamers treated Psychonauts 2 as completely expendable, dropping early and often while the other platforms played it and enjoyed it in a way that's fitting of the awards and acclaim that Psychonauts 2 received. So while Game Pass is beneficial to Xbox financially, it's beginning to be clear that it's not necessarily beneficial at all to the consumption and enjoyment of games or the modifications it's making to gamer behavior who use that service. Psychonauts 2 launch was strong and it reviewed really well. The story was praised and the level design was applauded. It's a great sequel and you can tell the care and love that went into developing it. And for the most part, gamers really responded. On Steam and PlayStation, they ate it up and played this game completely. It's a huge accomplishment to be in the top 10 most played games in our list as the competition is massive. And it's a bit sad that the results for Psychonauts 2 main platform is so poor, seeing that it's one of the best games released for that system. But those that were invested really did love this game, and that's all the developer is hoping to see. That their hard work is recognized and experienced as completely and thoroughly as it was here is a testament to how hard Double Fine worked to make this extraordinary gaming experience. And that's a wrap. Hopefully you all found this data interesting, and we all learned a little bit more about our gaming world today, and Psychonauts 2 in particular. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and sub if you haven't already. I'd love to read any comments you have down below. What conclusions do you all take from this data? And of course, feel free to suggest the next game we should look at to determine if anyone played it. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.